This is Steve at Universal Devices with a tutorial on working with the user interface of the ISY. I'm going to go over tasks such as PLM troubleshooting, link management, how to create various types of scenes, and how to view the logs the ISY keeps. The Powerline modem or PLM is one of the most important components of your Insteon network. It is responsible for converting the communications from your ISY into Powerline signals that your Insteon devices use for control. Occasionally you may find while troubleshooting an issue that you want to see the status of your PLM. In order to find that, go to Tools, Diagnostics, PLM Info slash Status. This will open a window that will show you the address of your PLM and whether it's connected or not. This is helpful while troubleshooting communications issues between your ISY and your Insteon network. Now that we're sure our ISY is communicating properly with the PLM, we can now add some devices for the ISY to control. This process is known as linking. There are a couple ways to link devices. The first way is to put the ISY into linking mode. To do this, go to Link Management and Start Linking. You can also hit the Start Linking button right here on the toolbar. This will put the ISY into linking mode. The next thing we need to do is put the Insteon devices you're looking to link into linking mode. To do this, press and hold the set button on each and every Insteon device you're looking to link. As you can see, I just put two keypad links into linking mode and the ISY automatically found them and added them. We are now presented with a dialog box with three options. The first option is to move existing links. The second option is to add devices found in links and remove existing links. And the third option is add devices found in links and keep existing links. If you're installing an ISY in, into an existing Insteon network and would like to preserve the links between the devices you already have, choose add devices in links and keep existing links. It's not recommended to use the last option as other home automation systems may have created half links. It takes less time and causes less headaches to start from scratch. So I'm going to simply choose remove existing links. The ISY is now adding a link between it and the PLM and the device. This will allow the ISY to monitor the status and control the Insteon devices. As you can see, the devices that we put in the linking mode have been linked to the ISY and are now listed under our network. Clicking on each device allows you to see the status and control each device. The second way to link devices to your ISY is to go to Link Management and the New Insteon Device. This will bring up a new device dialog where we need to enter the information about the device you want to link to your ISY. First thing we need is the address of the Insteon Device. You can usually find this on a sticker on the device. In my case, I'll be linking a four button keypad link. The address is located on a sticker on the front of the device at the bottom. Enter the address you located in the address box. We can go ahead and give this a useful name. I'm going to call this dining room keypad link. The device type we can use is auto discover. And again, I'm going to remove existing links. As you can see, the ISY is adding the device to the system. As you can see, the linking process has completed, and our new dining room keypad link has been linked. So I've shown you how to add a hardwired device to your ISY, but how about an RF device such as a remote link or a motion sensor? Adding a remote link or a motion sensor is a little different than the steps we took to add a regular device to the ISY. That is because RF devices cannot be auto-discovered. Their device type must be chosen in the drop-down list. We have made it a little easier to add a remote link to your ISY. To add a remote link, simply go to Link Management, Link a Remote Link to, and then choose the type of remote link you have. For this example, I'll be using an 8-scene keypad. What this dialog box is telling us to do is to put the remote link into linking mode. To do that, hold and, the pre hold and press the set button on the bottom of the remote link for three seconds until the green LED starts flashing. We're going to click OK. 
Now we're presented with the new Insteon device dialog box as we've seen earlier. I'm going to enter the address of the remote link found on the bottom of the device. And I'm going to give this a friendly name. I'm going to call it RL2. As you can see, the device type has automatically been chosen for us. This device number should match the number on the bottom of your remote. And I'm going to choose to remove existing links and click OK. As you can see, our remote link is being added to the ISY. We can add a new motion sensor using the same method as adding a new Insteon device. We just have to be sure that we choose a motion sensor under the device type drop down list. So to add a motion detector, we're going to go to link management, new Insteon device. I'm going to type in the address found on the bottom of the motion sensor. I'm going to call this motion. And in the device type, we're going to choose what the device is. So I'm going to look through the device list here, and I'm going to find the motion sensor. It happens to be the 2420M. This is telling us we need to put the, the motion sensor into communications mode, so I'm going to do that by pressing the set button on the bottom, on the back of the device. Again, I'm going to choose to remove existing links to keep things simple, and I'm going to click OK. As you can see, we now have a motion sensor added under our node list. And a motion sensor has been added. One thing you may have noticed as we've been adding devices is that the node tree can get kind of messy with all the devices, especially with devices that have multiple buttons associated with them. To fix that, we have the ability to group a multi-button devices together. To do that, click on one of the buttons and go to group devices. And as you can see, it grouped all of the buttons of my remote link together as one node here. So now that we have some devices added to our ISY, we can now make a scene and have our new devices controlled by the scene. Scenes are used to maintain different brightness levels and settings for multiple devices. They can be used to set the on levels of many devices at one time. For example, you can use a scene to set the brightness of the lights in your dining room for dinner. Now before we continue about scenes, now is a good time to discuss what the difference between a controller and a responder is. When you're adding devices to a scene, you're going to add it either as a responder or a controller. A controller is a device that actually triggers the scene, and a responder is a device that responds to the scene. So for example, if you have a switch, that would be a controller, and an appliance link, for instance, would be the responder. There are also cases where you can have two controllers in a scene, for instance, in a three-way switch. If I have one switch at the bottom of a staircase and the other switch at the top of the staircase, I would want either one of those switches to be able to turn on the light at the top of the staircase. So each of those switches would be controllers. So let's say you have a light over your dining room table and a lamp in the room. We can create a scene that has the light set to 50% to create mood lighting for dinner. To create a new scene, click on Link Management, New Scene. You can also use the New Scene button located right here. I'm going to give this scene a name, something like Dining Room Dinner Lights. And click OK. As you can see, we now have a new scene listed in our node tree. So now that we have our new scene created, we can associate devices with the scene. In order to associate a device with a scene, we can right click on the device and choose Add to Scene. If you have more than one scene, they will show up in this drop-down list, but since I only have one scene, I'm going to choose OK. So now we will confirm the addition of the device to the scene. Since this device can be either a controller or a responder, we need to select which one it will be. In our case, I just added a keypad link and I want this button to turn on the scene so we can change the button to a controller by clicking the controller slash responder button. This will toggle the button's action to a controller. Click OK, and as you can see, the ISY is now adding the button to the scene. So now that we have a controller for our scene, let's add a device to be controlled by the controller. We're going to go ahead and select our dining room lamp link, and we'll also go ahead and control click and choose our other keypad link that's in our living room to create a three-way switch. 
You can select both devices by holding down the control key, selecting the devices, and you can drag and drop them into the scene. Now, to create a virtual three-way switch, we can actually make the other keypad link a controller and leave the lamp link as a responder because it can't be a controller. Click OK. And as you can see, the ISY is adding our two devices to our scene. Now that we have our devices added to our scene, we will set the various properties of the scene. To set the properties, click on the scene that you want to modify and change the settings for each device in the scene down below. One thing to remember is that you want to set the on levels in the scene itself. If you set the on levels on the devices, the scene will not remember those levels. One feature that you may find handy when you're programming your scenes is the notion of mutually exclusive buttons through scenes. This is when you have a keypad link with multiple buttons added to your scene. So for instance, if I wanted to take my dining room keypad link button A and button B, I'm going to add it to my dining room scene, make them both controllers, and what we will do is set each of these buttons to be mutually exclusive. For instance, one will be an on button and the other one will be an off button. Basically each button will do the exact opposite of the other. And to do that, we're going to set one button to be on level 0 and the other one to be on level 100. So now that our keypad link buttons have been successfully added to our scene, we need to now go ahead and make them mutually exclusive. But before we do that, let's go ahead and rename the keypad link buttons to make them a little easier to understand what their function is. To do that, right click on the button and go to rename. We are now given the ability to rename these, this particular device. In this case, I want to rename this device only, and instead of A, I'm going to call it on. I'm going to go ahead and repeat the process for the second button. I'm going to call this one off. So now we'll actually make the buttons exclusive, mutually exclusive. To do that, click on your scene and then click on the device that needs to be mutually exclusive and bring their on level to zero. So in this case, our on button is going to be zero. and our off button is going to be zero. As you can see, the opposite is listed here. Now once this is done, you will see when we click each opposite button, the opposite effect happens. Now that we've gone over linking devices and creating scenes, I want to show you logging. The ISY keeps detailed logs with the status and the history of devices. If you want to see when your devices were turned on or off and any errors associated with your devices, you can check the logs. In order to check the logs, Go to Tools, Log. The ISY is asking if we want to open the log in Excel. We're going to say yes. And in some versions of Excel, you have to enable content because macros have been disabled. And as you can see, we have our log that shows the history of each device and when it was turned on or off. Another diagnostic tool is the Event Viewer, which you can bring up by going to Tools, Diagnostics, and then Event Viewer. At the bottom of the screen, you will see a drop-down box where you can choose the level of logs you'd like to see. You should keep the logs set to 3 so you can see device communications events. This is helpful when troubleshooting device communications issues. I'm going to manually turn on a device and watch the events. As you can see, when you turn on a device, you will see the device instact, which is the ISY sending the command to the device. Shortly after, you'll see an inst SRX. If you don't see the inst SRX, then something went wrong and you should start troubleshooting device communications issues. Most likely, the device is not responding or something is interfering with the signal getting from the PLM to the device. If you want to save the contents of the event viewer to a text file, you can click the Save Log To button. This will export the contents of the event viewer to a text file that is readable by any text editor. This is useful if you want to save the log contents before you clear it. You may also find it convenient to save the log in case you start to notice a trend and can use the logs to troubleshoot. I'm going to save the log file on the desktop here. Once you've saved the log and you want to clear it, to clear it, simply press the clear button. Yet another diagnostic tool is the scene test. You can access a scene test by right-clicking on the scene, going to Diagnostics, and then Scene Test. 
or you can go to Tools, Diagnostic, and Scene Test. What this is going to do is turn the scene on and then off, and you'll be able to see the inst XRXs in the diagnostic window that comes up. You want to actually disable all programs that are associated with the scene. Since I don't have any programs, I'm just going to click Yes. We're going to choose the only scene we have available. And as you can see, the scene turned on, and we actually see the results right in the window here. And as you can see, everything was successful. The ISY also keeps track of errors in a separate log. You can access that log by going to Tools, Error Log. This will allow you to choose a location to save the log so you can view it in a text editor. I'm just going to put it right on the desktop. And as you can see, the errors are recorded in a text file that you can then open and you can review. So that's it. Hopefully you have found this training video helpful. Please check out our other videos available on this site.